In this episode of Bondi Vet, Kate makes a worrying discovery during Freddie's dental surgery. I uh, just noticed that actually he's got a heart murmur. Chris helps a rescue donkey with a bizarre limp. That is definitely not normal. Scott gives a very special patient a swimming lesson. And Tim and the team place their bets as Hugo goes on the scales. Come on, Freddie. Come on. Freddie is a 10 year old Dachshund. He came in today because of his bad smell coming from his mouth. He's got a whole bunch of gum recession there. He's got pus, he's got tooth root abscesses. We really need to actually get to the bottom of what's causing all of these tooth problems and he needs to have a lot of them out. That up there is actually pus coming out from the top of that tooth. A similar on the other side. So you see on this side, same deal. It's really important before we put a dog under general anaesthesia to make sure that they definitely have their all clear in terms of their health. When we gave Freddie his pre-anaesthetic health check, we found that there was a problem. Yeah, there's definitely. Okay, so I'm gonna give them a ring, you guys, and just say um, we can't progress with dental until such times as we do a cardiology workup. Agreed. Damon's here today. Hey Mitch, how are you? It's Dr. Kate here from Bondi Vet. Hey, Dr. How are you? Good. I was just giving you a quick ring because I'm just doing some pre-op work with Fred and uh, just noticed that actually he's got a heart murmur. Um, I had a look back at his history and no one seems to have heard a, a murmur there. Yeah, yeah. And that is a problem. Before we put him under, I think probably not a bad idea is actually we, we do an echocardiogram of his heart. What we do is we use an ultrasound um, and just by absolute pure chance, we actually have a cardiologist that comes in on Mondays. So I kind of think if he was my dog, I would definitely go and figure out what's going on early. Yep, okay, talk to you soon. See ya, bye. Okay, so we're going to do a echocardiogram first. If we put Freddie under a general anaesthetic and his heart's not functioning correctly, he could very well die. Okay. Freddie was here this morning for a dental, uh, a really big dental, and uh, on examination I picked up that he had a heart murmur. Oh, really? It's really hard to hear, Okay. so I think you should have a good listen first. I don't know what's going on, but obviously there is no way that he's going under a general anaesthetic until we figure out what's going on with Freddie's heart. Okay, let's have a listen. So yeah, I can hear a heart murmur. It's relatively soft, a grade two out of six. Mm -hmm. So let's do an ultrasound and determine what's causing the murmur. Okay. It's okay, buddy. Twister, oh, hold sweet. It's okay, it's okay, sweetie. Okay. Is that better? There you go, that's better. Do you yeah. want some more? So what I'm hoping is that this is absolutely nothing. I'm hoping this is benign and we can progress with his dental. His teeth really, really need doing. There's definitely looks like there's pus coming up out of the top of one of them. Oh no. So it's not ideal. So he really, really will be a changed dog when he has a dental. Okay. So unfortunately we do see evidence of heart disease. The valve on the left side of the heart mm -hmm. is thick and nodular mm -hmm. and it's not closing completely. Mm -hmm. And that's causing blood to leak through that valve mm -hmm. and that's causing the heart murmur mm -hmm. we could hear with the stethoscope. Mm -hmm. Now the good news is, mm -hmm. is that it appears to be mild. Okay, great. Which means the risk of anesthesia mm. is very low. Okay. Now we know that he has mitral valve disease. This is usually progressive. Unfortunately mm -hmm. it's almost always progressive. Mm -hmm. So over time the valve will become thicker, mm -hmm. it will leak more blood, the yeah. murmur will get louder. Mm -hmm. They develop complications like congestive heart failure yeah. and they need treatment. Yeah, and they can die. They can unfortunately yeah. die I mean, it's from a, this it's condition. There's a lot of dogs that actually die in end stages of congestive yeah, heart failure. Yeah, it's one of the most common causes of death in older small breed dogs. 
Freddie's going to have a general anesthesia. He's going to be under for quite some time. And Dr. Tevia, one of our very amazing dentists, is going to take out a lot of Freddie's teeth. Freddie's had six large teeth out today. That's quite a lot of teeth. But don't worry, he still has quite a lot of teeth left. Dogs start with 42 teeth, so there's plenty there for him to still eat. And he will recover from this and he will be a better dog for it. Who's that? It's been a big day for Freddie, and he's a very well-loved dog, and it's time for him to go back to his owners. All right, there you go, buddy. Hmm? There you go. Ooh, he's a bit lovely. slow, a bit slow. <laughs> it's been a big day for Fred, massive. Yeah. He does have heart disease. Um, the good news part of it is it was pretty mild. What it does mean is that we do have to keep an eye on this yeah. longer term. So if you notice him start to get exercise intolerant or where he starts to feel like he's tired or walks, um, say something. He's had a lot of teeth out. It's going to be a rough couple of days. But I reckon probably two weeks time he'll probably come in and say, oh my gosh, he's a different dog. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll see you in a couple of days. Yeah, see you soon. Mm -hmm. See you, buddy. Say bye. 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 Bye, Fred. to my next patient. I don't get to see too many donkeys in the clinic, but when I was a kid, I used to have a pet donkey. He was called Pablo, and ever since then, I've just been fascinated by them. Chris is about to help at a famous donkey sanctuary outside Melbourne. The refuge is run by humanitarian May Dodd. Here at the shelter, we have um, about 150 donkeys in residence. They tend to be rescue donkeys of one form or another, either because of abuse, abandonment or neglect, or indeed that the owners are just too old to be able to cope with them anymore. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming. That's all right. Nice to meet you. Hi. Come on in. Where's this donkey we need to look at? It's this one here. Wow. That's quite dramatic, mate. May tells me that for the last week, Dusty has been walking and running in a really bizarre way. She doesn't know what's caused it. She has no idea. What she does know is that it's not normal. That's really something. It's very rare to see that. That is definitely not normal. It's almost like someone has control of his legs with little puppet strings and they're, they're pulling them up and down. But it must be awful for him because he just really struggles to get around. You're talking about the way you walk, yeah? Dusty has been with May for a year. We'll see what we can do, huh? The donkey arrived at the shelter in terrible condition with one eye missing. How did he lose his eye, do you know? I, look, I have no idea. He was just like that when he came to yes. the shelter? Yeah. yeah. Now, with this walking, yep. a recent thing? Yes, and it seemed to start off with one leg and then alternate, and now it's in both legs. And I'm just a, worried, a bit worried he's distressed. Yeah. The thing that bothers me the most is that if we can't do anything, where is this leading to? There are a couple of things that could be causing this. Probably the most important thing to do is give them a really good check over now and just see if there are any sore spots to start with. OK. okay. May is really worried about Dusty, and it's easy to see why. She knows that if his condition gets much worse and he can no longer walk, then she'll have no choice but to put him down. We'll need to find a solution here and find it fast. I've seen donkeys do some strange things, but I've never really seen one walk this way and walk in a way that really he has no control over. It's, not it's really normal. something. Yeah. Yeah. It's not right. If nothing can be done and it deteriorates to a point that he can't move around, then really I'll have to look at euthanasia as an option. I just want to check through here to make sure, first of all, there's no pain in his spine. What I'm looking for along Dusty's spine are really any areas of soreness, any areas where he may have slipped a disc or he may have a pinched nerve. That could cause this strange walk. So you can see it's not worrying him. In fact, I think he quite enjoys the massage. Well, seems to. So I think we can safely say a back problem isn't causing that walk. Well, that's good. All right, next thing I want to check are his hooves. Yep. If he's got sore feet, now you can imagine yourself, if you've got bindies in your feet, what do you do? Yeah, you hop. You hold them up. Yeah. And you really don't want to put much weight on them. Yep. And that would explain 
wise walking the way he is. Hey, Dusty. Oh, wiki. Hey, hey. Sorry, Chris. They actually look pretty good. Good. So what is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the big question, isn't it? With no problems in Dusty's spine and his back feet showing no issues at all, then this is a bit of a mystery. But I've got a hunch. There's something that affects horses that could be affecting Dusty. And the cause, it's right underneath us. So when I look at Dusty and see the way he walks, I know his back's not sore. Yep. I know that his feet aren't sore. But his walking is really, really abnormal. Yes. And the answer could actually be in here somewhere. In the pasture. Uh-huh. In country Victoria, Chris is hoping he's finally worked out just what's wrong with Dusty. There's something in my gut that's just saying that Dusty has string hole. It's a condition caused by a plant toxin which is found in some very select weeds. Now, donkeys eat this, it goes straight to their muscles and affects how those muscles fire. I'm looking for something in here It's actually quite nasty. Oh, OK. And it doesn't take a lot of it to cause a donkey like Dusty problems. OK. If my hunch is right, then the weed that most commonly causes string halt is going to be somewhere in this paddock. I've just got to find it. Come on, Dusty. Here. See this? This weed here has a toxin in it. It's called flatweed. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this weed in their own gardens. But for a donkey, just to eat a small amount of it, it can cause what is a really dramatic problem. So he eats the weed, goes into his system. Yeah. The toxins go to his hamstrings. OK. And they actually cause little spots there. Right. And the muscle dies off. And when that happens, the nerves no longer fire properly. So when he's walking along, it's like he gets a cramp each time. Oh, and it I lifts up his leg. Yeah, yeah. Like there. Yeah. OK? Yeah. And for him, the whole cause of all of his problems, of that? that strange way he walks, is, is sitting right there. It seemed remarkable that something so sparse and so small could have such a devastating effect on a, on a relatively large animal. Um, but I guess the toxin must be quite potent. So, Dusty, unbeknownst to me, you've become addicted to weeds. What a silly sausage. Hey? All your leg problems are coming from that. So we're going to have to rehabilitate you. It seems really strange that with all the other grasses available, Dusty wants to eat this weed. But that's what happens. They really get a taste of the particular flavours in this plant, and they keep on coming back for more. It's almost like Dusty is a weed addict. <coughs> we really need to find a spot where there's just no access to that flat weed at all. A little rehab area. OK. You got the spot for us? Well, I think so. I'll yeah. show you. You okay. see what you think. Yeah, no worries. OK. Come on, then. Let's show. Come on. That's it. Game's up, isn't it? Huh? May's property is huge and absolutely covered in flatweed. We need to isolate Dusty and take away that temptation. Otherwise, his problem's only going to get worse. Come on. My first thought was, well, I can't dig out every single weed on 160 acres, so what on earth am I going to do? And so, inevitably, the idea of stabling is, is the obvious answer. Dusty's rehabilitation will run for up to three months. We reviewed your case, and as soon as though you didn't really know you were doing something bad, you get a reward rather than punishment. He will spend his days detoxing on hay and hopefully then he'll be able to return to a paddock like stripped it. of the offending weed. Slow and steady steps for Dusty and I'm very hopeful he'll be back to normal. Enjoying. Certainly enjoying that chat. <laughs> I think there's a few jealous donkeys around here. Yes, that's right. <coughs> and now plotting how they can get on the weed as well. <laughs> Probably. <coughs> but now Chris has one final test for the donkey. You know all donkeys are born with a, a button, an ear button? No. You heard about this? No. Every donkey. What's an ear button? Let's check. Is your ear button working? Yep. It's in operation. Well, that's good. You had enough problems. You don't need that. It's routine service again? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Good. The ear button works. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I know what this one thinks. So what's the worry here? The worry is that the eye is very weepy. Before Chris leaves, May is sneaking in another patient. 
Tom's obviously got a pretty serious irritation to his right eye, so the first step in working out what's going on is really to clean it up. From there, we can work out a plan about how to fix it. So this is just soaked in saline. Okay. Now that's clean, the funny thing is the eye itself is actually pretty good. There's no sign of infection around the eyeball. Yes. The conjunctiva is good, but I would say what's happened is that Tom's had a conjunctivitis. Yes. Which has caused a whole lot of gunk to come streaming out of that eye. In the meantime, the eye itself has actually got better, but the gunk sitting on the skin has attracted flies, and he's actually got a secondary infection on the skin now. So an eye problem has actually become a skin problem. OK, OK. So what we need to do is make sure the eye problem is, is actually totally fixed up with some cream. Ah. Oh, I've heard of second opinions, but seriously, third and fourth, it's getting ridiculous. What do you think? You agree with that? I know this one thinks. These are hard working conditions. That's all right, Tommy. <laughs> I've given Tom some antiseptic eye treatment. Look, it's not the most masculine of colours, but in the long run, I'm sure he'll thank me. So we've treated the eye, but also importantly, we prevented the flies from ever, ever coming back in there. And irritating it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of fitting, really, isn't it? That it ends. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. That was lovely. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much for the time and effort you've put in. We're very grateful. Right. No worries. I, I get my kicks because well, they're never dull, are they? No, that's certainly. <laughs> that's what I mean. It's good to Thank see you. that. Thank you. Take care. G'day, mate. Welcome to the Australian Reptile Park. Oh, I'm Brandon. This is Hugo, the giant Galapagos land tortoise, and I'm going to tell you everything I know about giant tortoises. Are you ready? Let's go. Giant Galapagos land tortoise. The Galapagos Islands actually named after the tortoise, not the other way around. These guys get big, 300 kilos big. He's actually 176 at the moment, so not as big. Now, he's actually a mature male, and he's going to find a female one day. When he finds a female, he's actually going to climb up and do her back, which is why his plastron, the shell underneath, actually goes up, and the, uh, uh, the carapace on top actually goes down. Big don't. Now, when they actually do lay their eggs, they lay five to 20 eggs into little patches all over the ground. Not all their eggs in one basket like turtles. Big difference between them is they spend all their time on the land turtles in the water all the time. He actually excretes salt straight through the eyes and drinks up his nostrils. One of the most confused blokes in the world. Time's up, mate. We've got to end it right there for Hugo. That was a fast-paced 1.5 kilometre hour, uh, 30 seconds with Hugo. And, uh, mate, we're going to go find something else that's just as exciting. We'll see you next time on 30 Seconds with Brent. Oh, good girl. Slow down, sweetheart. Down at the River Thames, one of Scott's longtime clients is on her way in with a brand new patient. The reason I like Scott as much as I do is because he's straightforward. So I'm a northerner living in the south of England, which is, has its issues. It's quite difficult. We're quite forthright, we're quite blunt, northern people, and Australians are too. Slowly, babes. Good girl. Slow no more. After her last dog, Ruck, passed away, Ali recently adopted nine-month-old Mabel from the Battersea Dogs Home. She has issues. She's got a leg injury, which makes her, certainly that leg, uninsurable. Things are coming on you, my baby girl. But, you know, she needed a home, and she needed someone who understood what she needed. We need to do some heel work, don't we, sweetheart? Yes, we do. The attachment to Mabel's kneecap was torn away from her lower leg, Surgery has been done, but the puppy is still having problems. So I'm taking Mabel to see Scott because I am interested in what he's going to suggest I do or what I can do to help her or what may happen if she needs surgery again. You're a good girl. Come on. Going to go see Scott? Yes, we are. You're going to meet the vet. Ali's now arrived at the clinic. She's looking forward to introducing her new rescue dog, Mabel, to Scott. Oh, no one here. We'll just go straight through. We know where he is, don't we? Hello, gorgeous. Hiya. 
Oh my goodness, so good to see you. Oh, but look, who is this? This is Mabel. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. Oh my word, she is absolutely beautiful. All right, let's pop you up, little lady. Oh, she's a little bit heavier than old Ruck used to be. Ali started coming to the Aussie vet six years ago with her very first dog, an English bull terrier called Ruck. It must be hard post Ruck. I'm glad he chose his own time and you didn't have to put a needle in him. I'm really glad that I didn't have to on that day because I just, <laughs> I know I wouldn't have been able to keep it together. For you, I don't think and normally as a vet, you know, you can have a, a sort of a line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's Remembrance Sunday, so I'm never going to forget. On the day when I diagnosed Ruck's cancer, and I could feel in his abdomen that something wasn't right, and my heart immediately sank. The test results came back, and I said, how bad is it? He said, he's riddled with it. Um, which is tough to hear. And pretty tough, I would think, for Scott to say. Ruck went through 20 cycles of chemotherapy. The prognosis? He would live no more than six months. He hung in for nearly two years. Scott's care of Ruck definitely gave me extra time. He did, I believe, love my little man. So, yeah, he absolutely helped in that care. He did everything he could to make sure that Ruck was out of pain, living a full life as a client or a friend or a dog lover and a dog owner. You can't ask for any more than that. Yeah, it's emotional seeing you again. I and mean, I can I like... barely look at you right now. No. <laughs> the little man, you it's... know, you and me, all yeah. those moments. Make... There's so another reason out. Scott admires Ali so much. While she was looking after Ruck, she was also battling breast cancer. Ruck came with me to chemo. It, it was important to me, you know. I mean, I'm not that emotional. I don't talk about my feelings that much, but I talked to my dog and having him there helped. He was so brave. I mean, he's, he's making us look like silks right now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah. What a monkey. Good. Yeah, move on, it's say. <laughs> so, yeah, and I know he would want me to give a dog a home. So, there's his little sister. But you have got big boots to fill, my little man. Massive boots. Yeah. Massive boots to fill, eh? No pressure, though. No pressure. Tell me a little bit about this leg. There's a pin and two wires in there. It was a tibia crest avulsion. Okay. Well, that's basically where the patella ligament has pulled away the attachment that it sits on to the tibia, the bone here okay. in the back leg. So she, yeah, she's not a big fan of me straightening it up. No. And there's definite thickening around the knee and the joint. Are you finding that um, she is a bit lame still? And most days she's fine. Occasionally she either plays with another dog too much and, and moves it, or I walk her too far, one of the two, or a bit of both, and she'll be a bit stiff. So this is a, a process that we just need to go through a little bit of rehab work. I'm up for it. I think anything that's going to help her, that I can do and encourage, it's got to be a good thing. Looking at her, I'm not convinced she's going to be a real water lover, but we're going to do something called hydrotherapy. It's a big Ooh. word, isn't it? Yeah. It means swimming with you. Whether she likes it or not, Mabel needs to be booked in for her first swimming pool session. This could be quite a challenge. It'll help, it'll be good, be good fun. Be good fun, be good fun to hang out with you <laughs> and go for a swim with your dog. <laughs> just, a, just a standard day in the practice, yeah. yeah, yeah. That'll be good fun. I'm not so sure she'll think so, but we'll give it a go. And at last, Scott's managed to schedule that appointment with Ali and Mabel. Right, Ali, so I don't know if you know if she likes water. It's She's not fun. too bad around the puddles, but yes. well, I'm not so sure about real water. It's time for okay, Mabel to start water therapy to strengthen her problem leg. She needs a big girl's blouse. Come on, you. OK, let's see if you like water, shall we? Scott has volunteered to help with her first session. Oh, she seems all right with it. Yeah. OK, What's Mabel, this, look. Mabel, look. Swimming pool, look at yeah. that. Come on, come a little bit closer. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> Ali, if you come with me, she might follow. Come on, come on sweetie. Mabel's first impressions of the pool, not great. OK, so you go in first, okay. and I'm just going to follow you behind, OK? This way, Mabel. Good. I've known Scott a long time, but I've never seen him half naked. But I would again. <laughs> Swimming. Come on. Come on. It's all right, honey. Come on. 
Brave That's girl. That's it. Come on, come on, sweetie. Come on. That's it. Well That's done. It. Good job. I think it might be a stretch to say she's enjoying it. <laughs> I think she's tolerating it. You've got to do the work yourself, kid. Good girl. That's it. Good girl. Mabel did surprisingly well. That left leg, not as flexible as the right, but that'll come with time with more swimming. Oh, wow. She's got some pace. Ooh. Whoa, look at that go. Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a good thing as a vet to drown your clients. You know, it's, it, it never goes down well, uh, and that wasn't a highlight. Uh, pretty funny, though. Good girl! Look at that! Hey! Hey, baby girl! So, after a good swim the first time around, I thought, you know what? Every good lady deserves a spa treatment. So I had a little surprise in store for Ali and Mabel. All right. Let's wash up some of that wet dog smell, shall we? I won't tell you what I was thinking. Me and Scott in the shower? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows the cardinal rule is you do not pee in the shower. <laughs> oh, Mabel. Oh, my goodness me. Did you need that, sweetheart? Oh. I was just a little bit embarrassed because you, your little girl's not behaving, but, you know, everyone wees in the shower, don't they? <laughs> don't they? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hugo's brekkie, and you're eating it all. At the Australian Reptile Park, operations manager Tim Faulkner is about to take on a massive challenge. There's plenty of routine jobs we do at the Reptile Park, and one of them is weighing all of the animals. And when the animal is a Galapagos tortoise called Hugo... <laughs> The degree of difficulty goes straight to a 10. Today's exciting. To the average person, it, it may seem simple, but for the first time, we'll have an actual weight of Hugo. It's a big day for you today, isn't it, mister? Hey? Oh, cuddle time, really? Oh, there we go. Hugo's favourite keeper, Jules, is helping Tim with his weighty assignment. Hey, Jules. Hey. <laughs> big, big day? <laughs> yeah. Pretty excited. <laughs> what you got for us? Everything. 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 <laughs> you ready to get weighed? Not my fingers. The weighing's all part of Hugo getting a girlfriend. If he was deemed to be in poor health, it wouldn't be a suitable thing to ship him a girlfriend here from halfway around the world. Hugo has just reached his sexual maturity at the tender age of 61. Lately, the lonely bachelor has been taking out his frustrations on his favourite rock. I think anything that's got a little bit more character than a rock is going to be OK for Hugo. Last year, Chris was called in to run tests to find out if Hugo was capable of becoming a dad. Fortunately, the results were positive. You get your girl, mate. <laughs> Good times coming up, Hugo. <laughs> now he has to pass another physical. I think we need to get a bit of a... Weigh in, Jules. Do you want to scribe? Yeah. Hugo's weight is the talking point today. I'm going to put my weight on last. Tim, to all radio holders, we're about to take Hugo and weigh him. Al, front desk, do you want to start? What do you think Hugo weighs? Oh, I reckon Hugo would weigh about 162. Whoa! OK, thank you. Tim, to Kel? Yeah, I was thinking around 119. 119. I think he's probably going to be around... 123.5 kilos, roughly. <laughs> Mick, would you grab the van, mate, and um, bring it, park it next to the tree, and we'll walk Hugo down now? Yep, no worries. Come on, mate, let's go. We've got a custom-made box that fits nicely in the back of a vehicle. We're going to load him into there with a bit of energy. We're then going to take him over to a factory close by where we can hopefully walk him onto a set of industrial scales and get his weight. See if we can get you to come all the way out. Wow! The much-loved Galapagos tortoise is about to be weighed for the very first time. We've actually found the perfect place. A new factory around the corner has a set of industrial scales. He's so cute! <laughs> it's going to be a logistical nightmare. We plan, take Hugo, lure him with some carrot onto the scales and get his weight. Do you want to have a guess how much he weighs? Oh, about 200 kilos. 200? 200. 200, yeah. Well, that's the heaviest guess. <laughs> oh, OK. How heavy do you think he is? 500 kilos. 500? <laughs> Maybe. One, two, three. Whoa. 
I don't know if he's half a ton. <laughs> Good boy, mate. How do you weigh Galapagos tortoise? It's not easy. He takes four or five people just to lift him off the ground. A little bit more, buddy. There are lots of things that seem simple that are really difficult, and this is one of them. Hey, Tim, how you going, mate? Hey, yeah, good. good. Good to see you. Tim and his team have arrived at a local factory for Hugo's very first hey, weigh-in. Can you grab the forklift, mate? Yep. Tough. G'day. How are you? Oh, good. Nice Very excited. Yeah. Managing director David and his staff are happy yeah. to be helping. They have all the right equipment for this very special job. Yeah. Oh, I was surprised when they asked us if they got a set of scales. I thought, what are they interested in that for? Like, Reptile Park's a great place to visit, and it's good to be a little part of it. Anyone actually working here today? Well, they should be. I'm paying for them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ready? Yeah, ready. Have you got an idea on how much he weighs? You can't look. <laughs> you got those bets rolling? You put yours up. The competition to guess Hugo's weight is growing by the minute. Who's this? That's this, our account. This David, yeah. He works with numbers. He does. <laughs> The important thing now is that Hugo stays calm. He's in an unusual environment. We just want him to think that he's on his daily walk around the park. Come on. Here you go. It's probably past the food now, eh? You've got to come a bit closer. Not even Hugo's favourite treats are enticing the huge tortoise to make his way to the scales. We're not going to laugh at you, mate. It's all right. Come on. Good boy. It's a hell of an effort for, for one animal, but it's important. That's it, Hugo. We're getting there, buddy. Just one more step and he's on. We've got a trail. Good boy. Ultimately, the food always wins. That's it. A little bit more. He's on. What is he? 165.5. I lost. It wasn't even close. I was surprised at the weight. He was, you know, a quarter heavier than I thought he was going to be, and he holds it well. Great news, hey? Yeah, definitely. You'll get a girl. He's in great nick for that. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit jealous that he might actually get a real girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> Jules is jealous, mate. I think our accountant's been fudging the figures again. <laughs> no one here was even close. We need to get back to the park now because someone was, and it wasn't me. Mission accomplished. And as soon as Hugo is settled back into home... That's a boy. Come on. Back in. It's time for Tim to announce the competition winner. So, who was the closest? It's not one of the keepers. <sighs> That'd be right. Alex. <laughs> Alex? 162. Oh, what? Just three off. Alex is the supervisor of our front desk. She'll be expecting a present. I've got a little surprise for her. So, you won a date with him? And your present is this. That's a little conversation starter. Thanks. That's awesome. Here you go. Here you go. He doesn't like me. Oh, yum. Awesome prize. I'm so happy. Look at him. He's beautiful. <laughs> Do we make a good couple? <laughs> Give him a kiss, Al. <laughs> 